1968, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey was released. In it, he uses Johann Strauss's waltz on the beautiful Blue Danube to accompany his imagery of space travel. It might seem an odd choice to use 19th century ballroom music to accompany the vacuum of space. But if you bear with me, I will explain why it isn't. The question at hand is not why the music was chosen, but why it works. The why is explained quite simply here by Kubrick's widow. It was cutting the spaceships and all. He says everything in, in, in the new technique, everything in nature turns. Everything turns. If it doesn't turn, it's not alive. So all the spaceships turn. The world turns. And he said, I know it would sound old-fashioned to do a, a waltz, but that's what they're doing. While the waltz is a dance characterized by the constant turns of the dancers, it isn't, in my opinion, the main reason why this music works so well. Whilst we all kind of accept that Strauss's Blue Danube is synonymous with space, Bernard Herrmann of Hitchcock collaboration fame was not amused, and stated that to use such music in the context of outer space was vulgar. Bernard Herrmann took the use of the Blue Danube at face value and probably was only acquainted with Strauss as being 19th century ballroom dance music. So for him, the use of such music in space was completely out of context. The truth is, many now associate this piece with outer space. So why? What makes this music work? In order to continue, we must first understand the waltz. A waltz is a type of dance music written in three-quarters time, with a very characteristic bass pattern, a pattern that defines all waltzes. Here we can see many waltzes employing this bass rhythm. But Kubrick didn't just use any waltz, he chose a very specific kind, which we now know as the Vienna waltz. He also settled for a recording by the Austrian-born conductor, Herbert von Karajan. So what makes a Vienna waltz different to a normal waltz? Vienna waltzes were written roughly between 1850 and 1900, and they are all characterized by a rhythmic irregularity something most untrained ears will miss, but it is something your brain doesn't, at least on a subconscious level. A normal waltz has a straight rhythm of one, two, three, one, two, three, whilst a Vienna waltz lingers slightly on the second beat. So instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, you have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's show this in action by isolating the bass accompaniment of a waltz. First, we have a normal straight waltz without any alteration. Now I will take the same passage and make it Viennese by lengthening the second beat ever so slightly. The difference is small, but crucial, since it gives the music a weightless feel as the second beat lingers in the air over and over again. This rhythm bizarrely mimics properties in physics such as terminal velocity, seen when an object thrown into the air hovers slightly, almost weightless before the tug of gravity overcomes its initial speed. It also slightly mimics the orbital rhythm seen in the elliptical orbits of planets. But for the moviegoer, this musical choice offers a sense of subliminal weightlessness. 
And that, in my opinion, is why the Vienna Waltz became the music of space. Thank you.